today. You was getting the around the way girl look. You getting the John Cena back in freaking high school. I don't know. I didn't feel like it. I just put my hand in the I didn't feel like no wig today. It's kind of gloomy outside. Not that I'm gloomy, but, you know, put on my sweatshirt by my sponsor, McPoppy. Shout out to McPoppy. Club. Shout out to you, McPoppy. Um, I'm going to put up his Instagram if you want to go get one. Yeah, hey, uh, He makes the bomber's clothing gear. But, yeah, that's why. That's why. Because I just need y'all to know it's, you know, when it's up, then it's up. When it's up, then when it's not. I mean, it's like, no. Nah. It's a good day. It's a good day. I just needed y'all to know, A, I ain't bald-headed. And, B, I don't be feeling like wearing wigs sometimes. Y'all know. Y'all know how it is, black women. We get to do what we want. And I like to do what I want. You know, every now and then I like to wear earrings. And you can't see them when I have all that daggone, uh, you know, the commercial vibe, the, the entertainment vibe. You know, you always got to be on point. You always got to be on your game. I don't feel like it today. I don't feel like it. I still did my makeup, though. But, um... You know, it's a good day. Good Friday. Happy Friday to everybody. Today we are going to have an amazing show. I have one of the greatest people I know. One of the most spiritual people I know in the building today, man. I can't even describe. Before I even introduce you to, uh, before I even introduce you guys to who this guy is, I want to tell you how I met him. We uh, First of all, we went to the same church. I think he still goes there, but I, I don't go anymore but we started out going to the same church and then we ended up feeding the homeless with a foundation a Peggy Beatrice foundation feeding the homeless every Tuesday and you know he was like he's truly like the little brother who I just like to bully beat up and he likes to get on my nerves and it's just you know it's just great and it's just been like that it's just always been like that you know it's like it's like a love hate, but it's no real hate, you know. It's just like, <laughs> oh, here he come, and he's probably like, oh, here she come, and you know, it is what it is. But the greatest thing is, we're both very spiritual. We both love God, and you know, we both just love helping people and everything like that. Yeah. And I am so honored to have Mr. David Z on the show. Yeah, and I'm I'm really honored to be here. Uh, you know, to see. To, to see where you are and to see where you're still going, uh, I appreciate you bringing me on. So I know we're going to have some good time today. First of all, I had to bring you on. I, oh, I, I <laughs> had to because let me tell y'all something. I had this humongous birthday party on Saturday, okay? And one thing I love about John Cena, <laughs> she is unapologetically herself, okay? If I feel like drinking, I'll drink. If I feel like smoking, I'll smoke. If I feel like I don't know. I'll do it. <laughs> Look, and I still love God. I'm still me. I don't change for anyone. I don't care what people think of me. I mean, it just is what it is. So I had this huge party on Saturday. Mind you, y'all, I cooked for the party. I'm up and it was amazing. all night long cooking. Fried chicken, baked beans, string beans, macaroni and cheese, deviled eggs, I mean, we we had garlic shrimp, we had we had lobster, we we had so Sounds much freaking happy. food. Kanisha did all the vegan food. I don't even know what I had. We had my niece did did the grill, so we had barbecue chicken, hamburgers, hot dogs, sausages. She did all of that. Like it was so much food, and it was just such a good time. And it was sponsored by um, Blackstone Vodka, which is. Um, the company, a company here. I know y'all had a good time. With Roll Out Studio. And I mean, <laughs> literally, I gave her a couple hundred dollars and she said, I will make sure it is enough liquor for your party, for everyone at the party. And I mean, I had some left over. It was just like two, I think there were like four pound gallons of mixed drink vodka. And it, we had, um, I think I bought a hundred pre rolls. Oh wow! I mean, not a hundred pre rolls. Well, I don't know how many pre rolls it was, but it was a hundred dollars worth of pre rolls. So it was a, like a million pre rolls on the table, and we were just having fun. Food, weed, liquor. I don't smoke, so I didn't smoke, but I was drinking and t exhausted, tired, and then my friend. 
She's a DJ, so she came with all the DJ equipment, but she said, I need you to know that I'm going to have to leave this stuff here. And let me tell you something. It wouldn't have mattered if she left it, took it, whatever. I was not at that party. Y'all, I was like, <laughs> I finally know what it feels like to be a zombie. I was there, but I was not there. I'm still, can y'all tell? I'm still kind of exhausted. This is probably why I look like this. I'm still kind of exhausted from the party on yeah. Saturday. Like, it was a lot, and it was so fun. And it was up to everything. But the reason why I brought David on is because... This man, when the DJ left, he stepped up. Nobody even asked him. I don't even know how he got in a position. Because remember, I'm like delusional sleepy. <laughs> don't know where I got the energy from to hug and take pictures and eat and just <laughs> sing happy birthday and dance. I don't know where I got any of that energy from. I'm telling y'all, the person that was at that party was somebody else in my body <laughs> taking over. Because I was like zoned out. He stepped into the plate. He became a DJ. And I mean, Fire. You were on point in every angle. It was a karaoke lip sync party, y'all. That was fun. And the funnest thing is we're out here with a whole bunch of artists, so no one has to practice. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> just went in and just did their thing, and it was just so fun. But something happened. I don't know what happened, y'all. And you can go on my Facebook, and I am going to post a little bit more of the party on Instagram, but something happened where I explained it to David the other day that I think the party was so lit that God wanted to come. <laughs> I swear, I just pictured God like, man, this part, I got to go. I mean, I'm going. They like, God, no, you can't go to the parties. Uh, a is on earth. You know, you can't, you can't, I want to go to the party because the party was just it, so lit. When I was looking back at that, at that footage, John C. man, I, you know when you're like in it? Yes. And you can't really experience it. Right. But then when you look back at it, I was looking back at the footage and I was like, yo, we 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 went in. We went we, in. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, we so so I believe God came down and he forgot he was God. Like when you God, you're gonna change the whole atmosphere. Like everybody was drinking and smoking, and you know God made the well, weed, so he here for it. He like, man, they got the that. weed. You Every know he turned water into wine. <laughs> So you know he was here for it. He like, man, this party. He come down and all of a sudden, y'all, the atmosphere just immediately changed. And I had said, I wanted to do the never, would never, yeah, never. Yeah. And I just was like, I want everybody. I went on the mic and I was like, wherever everybody is, we're going to record this right fast. I want everybody just to dance where they at. So we dancing, never wouldn't, you know, that, that, that video, the whole parks, the whole party's doing it, right? Next thing you know. Melodies from Heaven. J Jen, Jen told me, she said, we got to play Melodies from Heaven next. No. Did you play Melodies from Heaven or did you, is, or is that Rain Down on Me? That's the same mm -hmm. song, in it? Yeah. So yeah, they play, they play Melodies from Heaven. And all I know is everybody in there just was rain down on mm. me. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, y'all, David get on the mic and just become <laughs> the pastor of all pastors. I'm talking about, <laughs> I'm talking about, I don't know what happened. All I know is everybody began to shout. Everybody was praising God. It turned, it was just like a John C. event. I mean, if you know me. If you know me, that party was me 100%. It was a John Cena event. It was just God, herself, people, love, fun. It was just, it was a John Cena event. Yeah. But I wanted you on the show because, A, I want to thank you for just being there, taking over and being yourself. But, B, I just... I just want to know what happened. <laughs> I just want to know. Let's just start there. Like, first, let's start with this question. Y'all, when I met David, his name was Jay-Z. Yeah. No one knows what the J stood for or the Z. <laughs> and no one ever even really asked. But these are things I'm going to ask him right now. When I first met you, your name was Jay-Z. Yeah. Tell us what that name is and tell us why now your name is David. All right. So, um... Jay-Z stands for Jihad Ziad. Jihad was my first name. Um, I came from a Muslim and a Hare Krishna background. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up 
my going to the mosque and then uh, doing Bhagavad Gita classes on Saturdays, you know, uh, when I would visit my dad on the weekends. Um, so once I got into college, like I was always, my dad said this, he said, if it's one thing I want you to do, son, is to live out your name. Mm -hmm. And so I took that seriously and uh, I didn't want people mispronouncing my name or spelling it wrong, though, you know, it looks the same. Um, they were always rhyming. And so once I got into the industry, it was just easier for people to know me as my initials. Right. No, nothing of with Jay-Z. So whatever. your name wasn't John Cena? Because that's pretty <laughs> hard. <laughs> Mother, I know you're watching. And dad, I know you're watching from heaven to pronounce and explain to people what a John Cena is. But go ahead. Your name was what? Jahad? <laughs> Jahad Ziad. Okay. And so um, there was this moment um, about a few years ago when I remember I was thinking about legacy and I was just like, man, I don't know if this Jay-Z is going to stick, mm -hmm. you know, I'm thinking long term and I'm, you know, like Jay-Z, like, okay, it's cool. And I love Jay-Z, but like, who am I? Right. Like, and so about a year after that, uh, I got a prophetic word that, uh, my name was going to change and God wanted to change my name and only you and him would know at the time. Um, and so long story short from there, God gave me breadcrumbs in terms of what he called me and what my name was based upon who he made me. And so, um, I immediately knew that it was going to be David mm -hmm. and, um, uh, what I didn't know when he told me to change it was that there was a, uh, a pastoral calling in my lineage. Mm. And so I was sitting with, so he gave, he, I got a prophetic word. And I was afraid to actually change it because my dad, my dad is 80, um, he's 82, 80, 81 this what year. What thing. And the only thing that my dad wanted for all of his kids was to live out your name. He said that. That's and what did thing. your name mean? So my name means, or Jihad meant a struggle amongst himself to live in the word of God. Wow. Wow. Um, and I'm going to cry today, guys. Name, I feel it. Yeah. The last <laughs> name <laughs> means godly wisdom. Mm -hmm. Um, and so there was this moment where I was always looking at Jihad as that name and saying, it's a struggle to live in God's name. And then there came this point when, um, me and what I like to say, my last lesson, um, a lot of people use X. I say my last lesson because we're on good terms. We're still cool. Um, and you know, it just, I learned a lot from my last relationship. Um, but me and my last lesson were together one particular day. And we were kind of just looking at um, and having dialogue. And it was like, when it comes to, we, we both are big on words. And when we was looking at my particular name, um, there was this conversation had and just like, there's this cycle that we all go through where we're connected to bondages or whatever. Uh -huh. And uh, we just looking at like, if your name means a struggle to live in the word of God. Wow, that's like, deep. And I used, I, I didn't think about it that way. So that happened, which was also just more like of this, like, huh, that was back before God even gave me the word that was changing my name. Right. But I got that prophetic word. I was afraid to kind of walk that out because I said I was in this between space of like, will I, you know, honor what my father wants or will I walk out what my heavenly father has called me to do? Right. So change my name or before I change my name, I'm sorry. Me and my last lesson, we were praying and the Holy Spirit said, there's a, lit, a a pastoral lineage in your family. And then the only thing I heard after that was grandfather. Never met my grandparents. They died before I was born. And um, when I found out, and I'm talking to my dad, changed my name, organically talking, my dad says, yeah, like, do you know, your, your grandfather was a minister. And you know that, you know, I, I used to, you know, go with them to these big conferences or whatnot. And I was a, uh, the supervisor of the children's church. My mouth dropped. You never knew none of this. I never knew my dad was even Christian. My dad was 20 years in Islam by the time I was born. Did he get locked up? Sorry. No. Because, you know, people get locked no. up. And they, they know <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Then they get locked up. And it's all about yeah. Allah, yeah. who I believe is the same person, by the way. But, uh <laughs> You know. So, but that's that's how David came. The word came. Um, Is that how the name David came, or did you did, did you name yourself after David in the Bible? Is your granddad's name David? 
my grandfather's name is David. Well, sorry, my oh. grandfather's middle name, I think, is David. My dad's name is David. Before my dad converted, his name was David. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you should have been D. You should have been DJ or D. <laughs> D. Tree. He's supposed to be David the Third. He's probably up here playing, yeah. playing and stuff, <laughs> coming from jail. No, I'm playing. I'm playing. <laughs> but that's dope. That's yeah. dope. That's that's because yeah. I was wondering. No lie, y'all. One day we go to, we go to feed the homeless, and he's like. Please don't call me Jay Z anymore. It's David. I'm like, Jay Z, yeah, out of my face. You know? This is that moment when we got on each other's nerves. I was right. like, no, I'm serious. Like, he was like, I'm serious. I was like, and then everybody calling him David. I'm dying laughing. Right. I'm like, man, stop playing all the time. But don't call that man David no more. I, that right. man is Jay Z. Like, everybody stop. And then all of a sudden, I was like, no, you for real. Your name, you changed your name to David. Yeah. Like, you legally changed it on paper. Yeah, yeah. David the third. That's what I'm going to call you, too. <laughs> D-Trey. D-Trey. <laughs> David the third. Yeah. I thought he named himself after David in the Bible. I'm like, Lord. Okay. Well, that, that, speaking of that, that is something to where when I got that word, he said, you, only you and him would know. Yeah. As in me and God. And so, the... I I never really read a whole lot and knew about David mm -hmm. outside of knowing he was a man after God's heart. <laughs> that one scripture, huh? The, we all know that know. one. Yeah. And what's funny is is that when I was at one particular service at the Potter's house, I remember that I was I was just like down and out because at that point it was just like some you know how we all go through these moments, just like, man, God, I've been, you know, doing this and I'm out here and I'm, yeah, you know, I LA feel like, is, you know, ooh, ooh. we all had those moments just like, man, I feel like I'm not, you know, I'm doing the work, but I'm not really getting the fruits. And, um, you know, uh, CG, she came up to me um, and she said, and that was just a prophetic moment at the time. And she was just like, God sees you. Don't forget that. He sees what you've been doing and you're, and she said, you're like David because he sees your heart for him. Yeah. Yeah. And that resonated. Yeah. And there were some other times where people were just always speaking to my heart in terms of like, yo, this, this guy, like the heart. And so I don't find it ironic that that connection what other people saw and I didn't see was that characteristic. of David. Right. I got a question, Nick, if you mind. Do you? No, shoot it. You also changed your name. Correct. Can you tell me what you changed your name to? Nick Nick is our production manager. He is off of camera, but... Uh, uh, so, Yahuda, mm -hmm. Yasha Allah, mm -hmm. right? Um, the first name in, if you translate it to English, would mean Judah, right? Uh, which is the chief tribe in the, tri in the tribe of Israel. Same tribe <coughs> Jesus comes from. Mm -hmm. Which means a gift... Uh, from the Lord. The last name is Israel in English, which mm -hmm. means a prince that has power with God. So, All right. That's amazing. Yeah. I, I actually changed my name, too, not to put a damper on anything. <laughs> At one point in time, I was Mahogany Queen. Mahogany <laughs> Queen. Hey, what did that mean? Well, let me tell you what it meant. <laughs> first of all, I, Some shenanigans. First of all, <laughs> Mahogany meant uh, um, black goddess. This is what I would tell people. And I had green contacts. People thought I had green eyes. I'm black as night with these green eyes. And I was really beautiful like that. You know, that was one of my things. And, you know, I honestly used to forget my name was Mahogany all the time. Yeah. Dudes would be like, hey, Mahogany. I thought I told them my name. They see me somewhere. And I would not answer. And I'd just be looking around like, Mahogany, answer this. <laughs> oh, my God. Answer Mahogany with this Mahogany. And then I would remember it's me. Like, oh, shoot. <laughs> like, I did. And for one minute, I was going to change my name to Mahogany Queen. I swear. But I'm, I'm, I'm glad I didn't. John Cia seems to be what's working, mother. <laughs> <laughs> but tell me this, though. Tell me how life has been for you in L.A. How, matter of fact, how long have you been here? Where you come from? And tell me a, 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 I don't like to say a struggle story, but a come up story. Just tell, like tell us a little something, something about your journey here. Yeah. Um, and that particular story that I'll choose will actually tie into what happened on yeah. at the party. But this is a funeral. Make it two minutes, by yeah. the way. It's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, I'm still working on that. We already 18 um, minutes in, and we haven't no, talked about nothing. No. So <laughs> I'm originally from Cleveland, Ohio. Okay, and, um, Cleveland in the house. Yes, indeed. And uh, I went to college in Atlanta. I uh, was there for seven years before I moved here. Okay. I moved here November 20th, 2012, so it's been about eight and a half years. Yo, I moved December 2nd, 2012. Oh, dang. I, I didn't know, know that. I know. Dang, I didn't know you. Came you moved. right after. I came like a month after you. Yeah. Man, that's crazy, yeah. ain't it? Um, man, we crazy so coming. It's been... <laughs> <laughs> well, I looked at the camera like, man, we should never. <laughs> it's been eight and a half years, and um, yep. in uh, 2018, I called that uh, a, a strengthening season. Uh, because there was so much that was going on um, all at once. And mm -hmm. this is where the relationship were, were, with God became more real than it ever has. So um, at that particular time, I didn't have a job. I didn't have income. I gave up the car that I had. I was first time going through depression. Um, my mom was in the hospital. My stepmom's cancer had come back and had mm. just uh, stepped out of my relationship. Not Well, not stepped out, but um, I um, uh, left my relationship. And there was so much going on at that particular time where um, all that, literally like all at once. Mm. And in a span of four months, like the suicide thoughts were, were heavy. I mean, and um, there were some other things going on as well um, that almost like wipe me out yeah um and so this is where the only thing that i heard from god in that particular season was take a step literally mm -hmm. and um in that space when when you're at the lowest that you can ever go mm -hmm. and where things are taken away or stripped away or things happen and you can't rely on people it's nothing to rely there's on. like in that space, one of the things that God was doing was helping me to understand that I was relying too much on people and not enough on him. Mm. And so once I could only rely on him, I had no other choice. God, God, God was there. The permissible will of that season was covering me. I didn't know that at the time, you know. Of course, of course. Um, and so after he started to redeem me and and really just really restored me it, it was it was this place with god in in that where i can't even explain i always you say know? i always say if you really want to meet god move to la mm -hmm. like i mm -hmm. thought back when i was on the east coast in dc like i made the kids go to church we went to church we did all this stuff i thought i knew god yeah but i really believe that god took me away from everything i knew and loved my 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 family, my friends, my career, everything, and I thought like I really want to do this comedy thing. I was like, golly, I mean, it burned in my soul to just go all the way with comedy. But what I realized was God had to move me so far away from everybody, yeah, to connect with me like He needed to connect with me, and I lost everything twice. Mm. I've never seen nothing like it, and I am like. Hustle queen. Like, I ain't yeah. no way I'm ever going to be down or broke. And, you know, mentally, I was, like, always on point. But I'm telling you, L.A. is not for the weak. The weak go home. And that is one thing I like about this place, and that's one thing I like about even this show. Because this show is just geared around letting people know how it is to come out here and chase your dreams. But before you can chase your dreams... You have to really meet your maker. Mm -hmm. And I ain't talking about die. Yeah. And when I say that, I mean, you really have to meet your maker. You have to die to what your past life was. And you have to remove everything that ain't like God. Yeah. Like, you can't have no pride out here. You can't have you can't have no anger. You can't be walking in unforgiveness. You can't, all of these things will be revealed. When you walking in your dream out here, when you walking in what you think is your dream, yeah. and until you get what God is trying to teach you, it's like you're gonna be walking in circles, or you're gonna go home, you're gonna give up, yeah. because you're not going to, you're not going to, you're not gonna bow down to what God really needs you to do, and that's what happened. That was your season of growth. You were either gonna grow or you were either gonna go, 
And that's, that's one thing about yeah, LA. That is real. And I'm telling you, it took me four years to grasp that. It took me four years. I, I, I hate to use this, but in the wilderness, it took me four years. In God's eyes, that's a blink. But, oh, my God. Yeah. It was like, God. I kept saying, God is me. Like, I am your favorite. I'm your favorite person. Yeah. All these people, are, they're great. But, I mean, <laughs> it's John C. for Pete's sake. Come on, my name is John. The <laughs> beginning and John. John is your homeboy. He was my dad. All this, like, come on. Like, I'm like God, but you know what? God was like that. John C. That was from the East Coast. She's got to go. Mm -hmm. Although I had amazing characteristics, it was some some dark sides, them hidden sides that only God knew. We can't have them out here. Yeah, because God is like, too much is given, much is required. You want more than the average person, so I need more than what mm -hmm. I'm going to need from the average person. And that's what happened with you. You yeah. just went through the you went through the storm to go to the next level, and yeah. boom, you out of it. Yeah. In the midst of it, though, I already know what Listen. you're talking about. People don't know. <laughs> Suicide thoughts and all that stuff. That stuff uh, is regular <laughs> me, out here to the point where, you know, you're hungry. You don't know where you're going to eat. You don't know where you're going to sleep. You, I mean, we're couch surfing. We're doing all these things, but Chris Rock told me, <laughs> I ran into Chris Rock, and I, I probably said this on a couple of episodes. I ran into Chris Rock one time, and Chris Rock told me, the only people that make it out here are the people that hold on. Mm -hmm. That's it. Through everything they go through, because you're going to go through so much. He said, mm -hmm. everybody that you see on TV that you think that's fame, they all went through what you're going through. So, you, you I don't know what make it means to anybody, but you're going to go through so much. Even the people that live here that's in entertainment, they live here. Like They can go to their grandma's house and eat. Yeah. You know, they struggle. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Is it true, Nick? That's real. It's real. So, yeah. just imagine, like, people that come here. It's like, I almost say, like, L.A. is it wants to wean out the weak immediately, though. Yeah. Like, immediately. But my thing is, what made you just say, you know what, I'm I'm here? I don't care what I go through. What made you get over or grow in that season? Quite honestly, as, as well, I wouldn't even say that this is cliche, but we've heard it a lot. Mm -hmm. It was the word that he gave me. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that I heard from God in that season was take a step. I knew what he meant. Yeah. And it took me about four months to do that because at that particular time, there was a lot of shame and guilt that, I mean, that spirit was heavy. Yeah. I mean, it was heavy. And to the point where, you know, that the, the, um, all the voices in your head, what we call the demonic chatter was just like, you can't be used by God no more. You may off, off one decision. And it, and it almost took me out and there was fruits out of that, but it was take a step. And once I took that step, God showed me how Satan was lying so much Yeah, about so many things. Um, and it goes back. I, I want to kind of go back to what you said. The love of God. I don't I don't think at this point, many of us. Like have a a a concept of like the, the, the love of God, like it, it's an ever evolving thing. Right. Um, but the love of God is, is so abundant. Yeah, man. You know, um, it's That's good. And, and <laughs> what you said where like the love of God won't allow you to live in an old identity that he didn't call you to. Ooh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> that is good. If Stuff. he sees you and says, I called you to be this, and mm -hmm. we're counteracting that characteristic, wouldn't you want somebody to say, hey, you said you want to, I mean, in the natural, just like if somebody says that they want to, you know, be a comedian, but they are, at, you know, working at a grocery store for 20 years. Yeah. You need somebody to say, oh, wait, you said this is who you want to become. Right. Right. What is this, these actions that you're taking that's not getting you there? Right. And so that's a part of how I look at the love of God, where he called us to become someone. Right. But we do things outside of that. And he says, I love you enough not to let you, you know, you know, and feed I, an I, I old call identity. it answer the call. Mm -hmm. 
I ca- that's what I call it. When you finally answer the call, because you can run all day and God <laughs> be chilling on the throne. You can run all day. I mean, it was a point out here where, no lie, I was like, man, nobody knows me. I can go to a big girl strip club, get some money, strip. I was just thinking of all types of ways. Because I'm like, if nobody know me anyway, because after a while, people was like, I don't want to send you no more money. Like, bring your butt back home. And I understood. Yeah. Yeah. I Nobody owed you anything. Yeah. But they don't know the real deal of the struggle here. Like, they listen to th- people like Tyler Perry. He's like, I lived in my car, but we don't care that you live in your car now that we're looking at your whole world. <laughs> like, you own a world now. Like, they don't get it. <laughs> so, you know, God told me just be transparent about who I am. Mm-hmm. Tell your story as it goes on. And that's just what I just decided to do, just tell my story. And I still am. I'm just telling my story because... I realized that what it was was God just decided to use John C., who was worse than David, as a light. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's like, I'm going to use you. And I'm like, why me? I actually didn't mind watching people die. It was a mm-hmm. point in my life where I could see someone get killed and be like, well, next time he probably wouldn't do such and such. You know? And to be brought from that spirit, should I say, to be brought from certain lifestyles and things like that and to be used for God's light is just like totally amazing. It is, ain't it? And that's what happens when you once you answer the call, it's over after that. Every demon, every everything is coming for you like every which way like that's why I, I'm telling you that's why I won't be out here having sex and none of that cuz it's just like Lord if I get any more seeds up in me that ain't of you, I am it's going to be all bad. I am on that same page there. But I have a, I have a question. Um, so what are your dreams and ambitions? So the, the, the focus is really to still serve other people out of the gifts. Mm-hmm. And I've always been a person that when I see somebody, it's like seeing their impact. Mm-hmm. And seeing their impact is just like, man, how can I serve or help that person? Mm-hmm. To, to to release that gift. And I've always been that way, um, wanting to help other people. And now is at a point in terms of knowing how that's going to, you know, happen. And so in 2016, uh, you know, God woke me up at three o'clock in the morning and gave me this vision uh, about a particular uh, award ceremony to, to honor people. Mm. Out of that birthed Purpose Works. Um, and so purpose works is the mission is the mandate. And a part of what that is, is the nonprofit. And, um, we create content, we create apparel, we produce events all centered around helping to serve people and ignite people to chase their purpose, to grow their purpose and to expand it. So many people are out here chasing paper, Mm -hmm. chasing, trying to secure the bag. And this is literally like, cause it, it took me a minute and I said, God, I, I can't move forward unless I know the name because the name is the identity of a thing. Right. And it took me a, a, more than more than about six months, uh, probably more than a year, if, if I recall right, in terms of saying, God, what is, what is it? What is it? And uh, ironically enough, I remember when God gave me Purpose Works and the revelation of that. I'm in the shower. And okay. then Purpose it, Works is your nonprofit. Purpose Works is the nonprofit. Right. Okay. I'm in the shower. I get the revelation. And ironically enough, I call Darius Carter, uh, the Carter's Touch, mm-hmm. and he's actually in the room, uh, you know, shooting. Dar- and Darius is a famous photographer here in LA. Yes. Yeah. And he's, man, he's super great, a super funny, great person. <laughs> and he probably he owes me, um, uh, yeah, you were right. Even though we'll talk about that later. (laughs) But, man, he's a a good friend of mine. I got the revelation. And, you know, just we've been rocking together for so long. So he was the first person I called. And I'm like, yo, bro, God finally gave me, like, the name. And Purpose Works, he said, Purpose Works. If you work it, it will work. Oh, come on God said that I put a purpose in you. Mm -hmm. That purpose is a word. My word does not lie. My word don't lie. 
if I gave you a word over your life, if you pursue your purpose, if you work your purpose, it will not fail you because I do not fail. And so out of that say, has Say that again so for the people in the back. Just that, <laughs> just that part of what God, 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 did y'all hear what God, listen, he said, I do not fail. So if you find yourself in a place where some things are failing, please believe you might want to look around because God ain't there. Mm-hmm. Figure out what you got to do to get your homie back because he don't fail. But go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. I just had to throw that in there. It, so, so basically, when you when you first came from Cleveland, what was, did you just come just to come? Because I like came to so-called be a comedian, right? I didn't know I was oh. going to end up being an actress and a writer and all these other things that, you know, I have become. But what was your sole purpose when you first came first before you, what was your, what was your dream? Why did you come to L.A.? I I, you know, quite honestly, John C., I tell people I didn't come to L.A. God, like, it's as cliche as it sounds, God brought me here. I was working on The Walking Dead in Atlanta. I okay. was fine in Atlanta. Okay. So. I wasn't trying to come here for another five years. Okay. And working on The Walking Dead, the A.D. Austin, he was just like, because Team Wolf was going to be moving here. I was also working on Team Wolf. And I'm talking to Austin. He's from L.A. He was just like, yo, you should think about going out to L.A. It would be good for you if you are looking to get into the DGA, which is what I was doing at the time. Okay. And I, Teen Wolf season two was like the toughest time in in my career in the industry where I was just like, yo, I'm, I think I might be good. But working on The Walking Dead, I said I may consider going to L.A. LA. if it's a different crew on because Teen Because what Wolf. a lot of people don't understand when you guys are watching TV, it takes Hundreds of people to make one 30-minute show. It yeah. takes, I mean, it's a whole bunch of people. Like, when you see these people winning these Oscars and things like that, it's so many people behind the scenes that really won the Oscar. Like, yeah. And that's why, believe it or not, actresses, we get paid the less. You probably think we get paid the most. But we actually get paid the less because we get the so-called fame. We get in front of the camera. But it's so many people behind the camera that make these shows work and things like that. So, And they also have the dream of, I'm about to move to L.A. and be, and, and be the lighting person or the makeup person or, yeah. you know, the stage per, the sta- the person that builds the stages and things like that. All these people are important and all of these people are dreamers. And it, it's funny because most of the, just the talent gets the real limelight, but... Every single one of those people have, like like Darius, moving here to be a photographer, like, has a dream, you know? So, I just wanted to put that out there to let y'all know, like, yeah, that he just came because, you know, he thought he was on Listen. some Walking Dead stuff. And that's what he was doing until he got here. And God was like, the Walking Dead, boom, I got something for you. I was, I was working on that show. He said, would you consider going out? I said, I might consider. In that moment, he said, he went to the first AD, Jeff January. And he was just like, hey, Jay-Z wants to go to L.A. Will you take him? Jeff January said yes. We had worked together on Team Wolf. Mm -hmm. He said as long as the other AD, which was J.D., that's the person who brought me up in the AD game, uh, was cool with it, then we're good. Now, I knew J.D. would say yes, but we know in the industry, like, until, you know, N- nothing's you know, nothing I, until right. you so, get the check. Listen, it ain't even look. John Cena. Matter of fact, even if you get the check, it still may not make TV. Right. Y'all know how much stuff I did. I don't even tell nobody things I do no more. I, look, people be telling me I seen you on a uh, Lifetime. I be like, oh, oh, I forget I did right. do that. Um, Cause you don't know if that stuff even going go. You you be on set for weeks and it never hit TV. Listen. And people think you bojangling out here, and it's like I don't care. I was at work. I got the check, but. <laughs> Y'all ain't see what it did, but oh well. Right. I get it. <laughs> so. So that happened. I went about my life. So I'm just like, okay, cool. Three months had passed. I'm about to get my own apartment. Finally, you know, I finally find this nice, like, apartment. It was a built-in bookshelf, ballet trash. Oh, that's, that's Indoor ooh. basketball court. <laughs> like, I'm like, yo, finally. You know, little 25-year-old about to have my own spot. Not your own bookshelf, right? though, on these Look, niggas. No, it, it was a, it was, it was, it was a. <laughs> designed in bookshelf in the apartment. <laughs> I know. That's what I'm saying. You, that apartment was lit. Look, listen, lit. I thought I thought I was about to be good. And um, uh, we, we set an appointment to sign the papers. Come in on Friday. We're good to go. And uh, I went in on that Friday, and the guy just so happened not to be there. And mm-hmm. the lady that was in the office was just like, um, oh, I don't, I don't know why he's not here but just come back on Monday. 
And I'm just like, all right, bet. I ain't thinking nothing of it. Before I can get back into that office to sign those leasing papers on Monday, I got a call on Sunday that changed the trajectory of my life. That, that, call, was, the, that was the David call. Yeah. Can I speak to David? Who? <laughs> Your granddad. <laughs> like, no, like, <laughs> can I speak to David? But, uh, yeah. okay, that's, 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 that's what got truly me to amazing. So yeah. I got a question, though. This is, this is a good one. What? Hold on, let me read it. I wrote it down. Okay. What would you rather throw away? Love or money? Oh, that's easy. Money. Real quick. Easy, right? <laughs> easy, right? Real quick. Oh man. Real quick. Easy. Easy. Look, I don't even I don't even I don't even need to go in into that. <laughs> money by Let me tell y'all something. One thing Love I learned is currency in for at, me. one thing I learned in LA. One thing Los Angeles has taught me is that you can survive without one penny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, but you cannot survive without love. You cannot. And, and a lot of people always asking me things like, how'd you get this? Or how did you do that? Or, oh, my gosh, you this and, uh, and this and that. And I'm telling you, listen, it's that word love. Mm-hmm. It covers a multitude of things. It is so real. That word love. You can't pay for you can't pay for that. Up under love is all types of stuff. Yeah. Forgiveness, just everything Ooh. is under that word love. And just being real and just being who God created me to be will always advance. It'll always advance you. That love, I mean, I'm telling you, I was times where I ain't have a dime. But God is just like, I I I promise you, you will always eat, you will always have a roof over your head, you will always have clothes on your back. Period. That's what that's my minimum of what I do daily, yeah. you know? So money and all of that stuff, oh, man, I'm with him. I, yeah. I, I, get, I get care less. But, it, yes. but if you had to tell, if you had 30 seconds to tell the world something, what would you tell them? That's a great question. Um, depending on what people are, but, uh, you know, I would, I would tell them, know who you are, Mm -hmm. know who created you. We don't breathe by ourselves. Mm. It doesn't take, like, we're not consciously saying heartbeat, go, heartbeat, go, heartbeat, go. Blood vessels, you know, expand, contract. And that, for me, when I think about Going back to the love, the, the, the love of God and that he has for us mm-hmm. is so profound. When we can find our identity in love, you're good. Mm-hmm. You're good. And so I, w- I would say know who you are by pursuing that identity in, in love, which for me is Jesus. Like, I got to point it back to the source. Okay. Nick. I know you wanted to answer that question. If you had 30 seconds to tell the world something, what would you tell them? <laughs> Two things. <laughs> Nick, I knew it. I, 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 Nick felt right, it on right. I felt it on him. <laughs> For this is the purpose of all men. To love God, to fear God and keep his commandments. Second thing I would say. For the love of God is to keep his commandments and they are not grievous. And what? They are not grievous. They're not hard to do. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's he all. Complicated. That's all. <laughs> well, 30 seconds. Yeah. If I could tell the world anything, I would tell the world to take it easy. Mm. To don't put, you putting too much on God. Uh, he's simple. You're putting too much. God, God is a simple God. He's not. He's not um, this thing that you got that a lot of you earthly people are putting on him. God created you in his image and he's a forgiving, loving God. And he made us in his image. And, you know, just I would Mm -hmm. say relax. I would say forgive more. I would say love more. I would say hug more. I would say, you know, call, call, pick up the phone, you know, put down, put down, put down (laughs) social media and, you know, pick up the phone. I would say, you know, do more for your 
elders, you know, do more with your kids. We need to get back to the 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 eighties where there was love, where you had to take your kids to the park mm-hmm. to to drain their energy, and you know, <laughs> not have them sitting there on you know a video game, and now they're eight years old watching porn, and you don't know because you yeah, are in your own real. world, working hard to, you know, being a person that had everything that most people are aiming for i've had it all and then to what society would say nothing Mm -hmm. i have now you know i've had the houses and the cars and all that stuff like that but i have so much more joy in this life my my second i like to call it my second life than i had when i had all of those things i would say take it easy relax don't 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 put that much pressure on yourself and stop putting that much pressure on God. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. like I was oh I did not. No, don't put me don't say what God said because you don't want to do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's what that's what I would say. I would say let's love a little bit more. And you know, the word the word of God says if we turn from sin, he'll heal our land. Mm-hmm. And a lot of things are going on because we just don't want to stop doing and being, you know. And self, but we're gonna take a quick commercial break. Ah, we'll be back in five minutes. Quick. Thank you guys <laughs> for coming back. Thanks for coming back with us, and thanks for the people that stayed in the chat. I want to shout y'all out. What's up, Jason? What's this? Oh, is this my girl, California Go? Was it? Mm-hmm. Who's that? Them? I can't see y'all. I can't. Ron. Yeah, h- hook him up. The Ron's in there. Mike y'all. Hart. See more. After forty, <laughs> I'm just in denial. I need to get glasses, and you know what? No. I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna get that dag on uh, California State Insurance back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when yeah. it run out, you don't feel like going on the computer and fin- figuring out your login and all that. But you know what? I can't see. I'm gonna have to get that. But thanks y'all for chatting with us. Thanks for being in the chat. We back and all oh man. Listen. I had to. I had to bring my man Darius Carter on. He came up here just to, I don't know, take pictures because Darius is one of these people that just be snapping pictures. You know that friend? Before there was phones and all that, yeah. he had the 110 camera. That was him. That like, was look. <laughs> wanted to be up? a photographer. Now he is just like this huge photographer. He yeah. just does everybody's everything. I mean, weddings, baby showers. I don't care what it is, <laughs> radio shows, just whatever you need him for. Bow, he here. Yeah. But Darius is also one of the people who I, I met in church in the beginning, and um, we begin feeding the homeless with uh, every, on Tuesdays with the Peggy Beatrice Foundation. So I'm glad you came. Yeah. I haven't seen you in a long time. I had to come. The homie got married on me and everything. <laughs> you know. What happened? You that, know. The homie got uh, uh. <laughs> if you liked it, then somebody put a ring on it. Like, what man. is going on with you, man? How you been? It is a whirlwind. I mean, just sitting there listening to y'all have a conversation. And just like what you said on your last point, just relax. Mm-hmm. I've had an opportunity where I went through so much. You've mm-hmm. been a part. You've seen. He's seen. And then I got to that place, like you said, where it was like, just relax. Mm-hmm. Relax. And the moment that I relaxed, there was so many curtains being pulled back mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. unveil the things that God had waiting. And he was mm-hmm. like, I had this sitting here for you, but you was doing too much that you couldn't pay attention to it being right here mm. all the time. All the time. Yeah. You know, my wife has been around all this time. And uh, one of my closest friends that I look at as a sister, this is one of her best friends. Mm-hmm. And so when we have outings or birthdays, I've seen her. We talk. We have, but that curtain was there, and I couldn't see her. It was like God was protecting both of us. Oh. And it was till I had to get to a place to get calm. It's kind of like right. um, how I picture the name of term. It's kind of like a light reminds me of just like climbing this mountain. Mm-hmm. And we just keep falling back down because we're not going up the path that God really needs us to go. Because we're looking at things that this way might be quicker or this way got some water. Or just right. think we're doing things on our or we own. we go on with our own Instead equipment. of just believing God when he says, God before me who could be against me. Mm-hmm. We, you know, and it's just that one day where 
you just down to nothing. Right. And, he, and God is just like, now I got to strip uh, everything for them <laughs> person to, to just totally see and get me. And that's like the greatest day of our lives. It is. is. It yeah. seemed like yeah. it's so hard, the things we were going through. But the greatest thing ever is when God was straight up like, you know what? You ready? You ready. Because the word of God says, I got get, I get stored up blessings. So I had this for Darius, but I couldn't give it to him. So I'm going to put it over here. Next thing you know, you got all of this stuff yeah. that come douche. And everybody's looking at you like, what did what did you do? Or what are you? How Where did are you? it come from? Yeah. And it's like, how is this and this is this? Now this is this and this Ooh, that's and this. Good. Now I'm getting married and now I'm this and that. Like I literally have a boyfriend and y'all know I don't do. <laughs> she don't do that. I don't do relationships. Don't. She don't do I it. I try to tell this dude and y'all. God <laughs> gave me the most spiritual, humble, and I'm not trying to just. I'm for real. I ain't trying to like stay on your good side, boo. But I'm for real. This dude is so, I never knew. I mm. never knew when yes. God said a man to find a wife. This dude is so John Seal. Like, Perfect. I'm talking about he gets it. He gets me. And he's so spiritual. And we just on the same wave when it comes to God. I ain't never had a man pray for me like this man prays for me. Just like Come certain on. things Amen. that it's like God couldn't have gave me him when I didn't get it. When mm. I was up here trying to chase something that I thought I was supposed to be chasing, it's no way. I yeah. wouldn't have even been able to yeah. understand what the heck he was talking about. And he was talking my language. Exactly. Yeah. And that's how, <laughs> yeah. that's we how it happened. We would be praising God together all the time, wouldn't we? When we got yeah. together and stuff, yeah. it was all about God. But we still was in a bunch of mess because we were in the middle instead of God in the middle. Mm -hmm. And the second, we just, <laughs> we couldn't do it no more. <laughs> We're like, the second we move out the middle, God came in the middle, it was over. Mm -hmm. I remember, remember my apartment? Remember it was like 10 of us living there? Oh, my God. <laughs> that was one of the most transforming moments of my life. You Can you imagine? I was the only man. You was the only dude in An African-American man <laughs> oh, who has done his thing, and now here I am on a futon. Head to foot with another girl, and then there's like how many was us? In there? It was literally like six people downstairs. <laughs> I was the only guy I was upstairs in my bed. Yeah, but you know what? You know? John Cena, who didn't you allow? John, John Cena got, got the biggest heart. She had the halfway house. She got the biggest heart. I lost my best friend over there though. My best friend, who we had an apartment together, he could not. He can't stand me to this day. He's still out here. He can't stand me to this day. But I mean, at the end of the day. People took me in. So when I got an apartment, yeah, I got my it. mom said, you always taking in these strays. Good Lord. And I'm like, Mom, I, I I, can't let nobody sleep on the street. If if we we had blow-up mattresses, we had one futon, it was a lot. It was, it was a lot, a going lot. On. But you know where we were? We were good. We were incubating. We ate. We, ate, we prayed. <laughs> I mean, fine. we were just we were just doing what God did. And that apartment literally, I got evicted. Let me tell you. When you get evicted from an apartment in L.A., y'all, you are not allowed to get another apartment. They don't give you another apartment. I got evicted from the apartment without the eviction. I went down there, and I was like, y'all didn't never sign these papers right. Y'all didn't do I don't remember what I said. They were like, just go. Just go. Like, Let's get out of here. Just get out of here. And I was you like, just leave? Okay. Just go. The police came. Well, I waited for the, the real eviction. The police came, locked on the door and everything like that. But I never got the eviction on my record. Dang. Right. And that was just like, that was God That's all favor. the way. That's favor. Like, even in the midst of it, like. In the midst of it, though, he will always keep you, though. I will never yeah. leave forsake you. That's scripture. Like, I'm not going to leave you. It's just that I can't do what needs to be done until you get in my total alignment. And that's where it all began. That's where it began. Mm -hmm. that's what, that was real. And that was the moment where things crossed over for me. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay, this is real. But like you said, we had the, we understood what was important. God removed, because God has to strip you down. And he has to get you to the lowest place where you can't go anywhere but up. Nowhere. Yeah. You can't go nowhere but up. Shoot. And I'm, he, I was at a place where I said, I can't go anywhere but up from here. Yeah. So, God, here I am. And yeah. this is who I am, raw, authentic to the people around me. Right. And that opened up doors that God was like, see, if you would have just been that way originally, <laughs> This would have happened. If you would have been that way originally, mm -hmm. this would have happened. Mm -hmm. You know, and things just navigated, you know. And now we all, you know, where I'm at now is like, what? I be crying almost every day to my <laughs> wife. Like, do you understand where I was? Like, I don't think I was going to be here. No yeah. way. At no this, way. Like, I didn't see this for my life. No it's way. kind of what he said, though. Like, 
in terms of because when I when I'm listening, just like you said that God said, if you would have done this originally, yeah. Like I remember when Pastor Torre said one day, he said God wants to, in paraphrasing it, but he said God wants the original version of you. Mm. And when you said that, it took me back to that message. It was just like, anytime we do something outside of God, we're we're portraying a counterfeit us, mm. you know. And That's and good. for him to say, you know if you would have just done this originally, yeah. how I originally made you, what I originally saw in you, yeah, then... Things would have been a lot more easier. Know, I can't know, that, bless who you pretend to be. Oh, uh, He yeah. said he not blessing no counterfeits. I can't bless who you pretend to be. Yeah. I need to and bless who you what are. I'm telling you, everybody's like, how did you do this? How did you get this? I'm not fake. I'm not, I'm not Hollywood. I'm not giving them... Mm. I don't give them who y'all think I should be. I give them who I am. Exactly. And that's who God, you're right. That's, that's, who that's what's going to bless people. Because what happens is you make that counterfeit version of you your God. Because mm-hmm. you depend more on that identity version of yourself mm-hmm. than who God actually created you to be. Which means that you're trying to trump God and what he created you to become. Mm. And you're getting in the way. He's like, I can't bless that. Yeah. That's not a part of my plan. And, 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 and I don't think people, yeah. and I saw it that way. And that's when I saw it. And I was that's like, that's good. disgusting. I was like, he can't bless that guy that everybody is like, oh, that's Darius. Look at Darius. And Darius was flying him. fine, sleeping right. dead on the futon. <laughs> sleeping you dead on the futon. You would never know. But Darius you know, that was the south side of Chicago with me. You get what I'm saying? You ain't going to catch us Midwesterners <laughs> busted. You One know what thing I'm about saying? out here, they, they got this Ooh. saying, fake it till you make it. When I tell you, man, I wish you would show up to them sets looking homeless. Now, look at me now. I'm in <laughs> sweats. Never. Oh, now, now we be chilling. Look, I don't care. I mean, you got whenever. my own radio show now, and for real, for real, I ain't do my hair. <laughs> <laughs> this is how I would do my hair. Them Hollywood wigs and stuff, that, this is me right here. <laughs> Yo. Darius, All I needed to do was to be myself to be free. Darius was the most decked out. Chicago Midwesterner. Now, I, I never saw, seen like, somebody that come in a full suit to, to feed the homeless. Like, yeah, come on, dog. Like, put, a, put on I some regular clothes. I'm talking about f- <laughs> just fly. 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 Oh, but man. flying homeless. Flying like, homeless. Flying yeah. homeless. And it didn't make sense good. to me. And when you look it, at that man. on the outer scope, you say, you see how silly that look? Yeah. And God is like, that's what I've been seeing all this time. I said, look Ooh. at this goofy. And I'm like, yo, but that's you had ridiculous. Your camera. But I had the camera. And it was in that moment because the sacrifice that had to happen for me to get my very first camera was a major sacrifice. And God was like, okay, I see that sacrifice. Mm-hmm. It was almost like the, the lady with the two coins in the temple. Right. He said she gave more than the riches because she gave all she had. Right. And I gave my all to start this. Yeah. Mm. I had nothing left, literally. And then this took to a whole other level because God was like, now you're not depending on your own actions. Mm-hmm. My word says that I would give you the ability to create wealth, but that ability comes through me. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. And you know what else, y'all? I believe in, like, me and my girl Maya, we always talk about this. Shout out to Miss Maya. The power of the let go. Woo. Mm-hmm. When you begin to just let things go, I don't care what it is. Mm-hmm. If it is holding you down and it, it, it is powerless, you got to let it go. Absolutely. I don't care. Male, female, friend, kid, I mean, my parent, uh, forgiveness, whatever it is, cars, something, you know, people will be out here struggling yeah. to floss. Mm-hmm. Let it go. Let You got to let that it's go. It's the power of the let go. That's when God can come in. You got to let it go. Because everybody doing the same thing. The same person you're trying to impress is doing the same thing you're doing. Trust yeah. me. They just doing a little bit better than you and you think that they're better than you. And it, everybody's doing the same thing. You How about in God's eye, you are the same. Them people you used to feed, the homeless people. Do you know that's why I went Man. down there every Tuesday? I needed they, they them. They were the joy. They had the most joy I of the world. I ain't never seen somebody with it. so much joy and who had nothing. And they were so grateful. Ask them. I would yeah. cry like every time we had to leave when we ran out of food and stuff. It broke Crazy. my heart. And this one guy told me one day, uh, people come to him and feed us all the time. We always eat. He said, we have the most out of every. We don't pay any bills. They give us a check. Mm. <laughs> Different foundations feed us all day long. He said, we got missions everywhere. We get clothes from people. He said, and random people come up to us on the street and just give us money. He said, we are blessed. Mm-hmm. Right. Remember that guy that one time that didn't get anything from us, but he watched us on the curb. And when we circled up and prayed out, he, prayed. he walked in, he prayed for us. Yeah. Is that oh, the, wait, remember is that, that moment? The red, the and we were on our way back. Everybody had the feeling, but like, I don't know if I should say it. 
And then when one person said it in the car, I was like, yes, I felt the same thing. <laughs> man. He tore us. He wrecked man, us. Man, he ripped us apart. He sat Ugh. there and watched us fit every person, clothed every person, pray for every He didn't get up. He didn't want nothing. He walked over. And so I just want to pray for y'all. I and remember like it was yesterday. I felt like Jesus was there in person. I thought he was God. I, I remember we said that in the car. We was yes. like, yo, I think that was God. <laughs> like, I think that was him for I real. I remember that like it was yesterday. But um, I just want to get back to where you were, David, in that space at the birthday party. Where you literally, when we played Melodies from Heaven, and you just began to preach take it take me back to that mind frame you was in it was just like there's it, it kind of speaks to kind of what you all were speaking to, to to tie it in um when you were just talking about like we're living in this you know sometimes we can live in this false identity right mm -hmm. and you know earlier you were talking about in, in regards to like you know like it, uh, paraphrasing it like authenticity and so there's this space that we all have experienced where we're authentically who God called us to be. Mm -hmm. And we can, we can feel that difference. And so when Melodies from Heaven came on, the, what was kind of like the, the incubator or the conduit of that was that's just a great song, period. It's, you know, it's a classic, right? And when yeah. you listen to mm -hmm. it, your spirit starts to, like, you know, respond. And so one thing that I do now is... I really, when I listen to a song, I don't just listen to it. I really am intentional with connecting with it. Mm -hmm. And so when Melodies from Heaven came on, it was just this place where I was just like listening to the words. And I'm like this unofficial kind of like, you know, mini Kirk Franklin in my head. So I just be switching up the lyrics so that's that what, it speaks to me. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so that it speaks to me. David, <laughs> David, dance for us. <laughs> Everybody say, David. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm like mini Kirk Franklin myself. In my sometimes. head, sometimes. In my so head, you know. Wrote. I'm like Kirk. Uh, move. My rendition of Melody. Sing, from family. <laughs> <laughs> but it was this real uh. place, right? And I heard the lyrics, but I switched the lyrics intentionally for what was truth for me. Yeah. And then that's when the Holy Spirit came because when I was listening to those lyrics. I really connected with saying, okay, well, like, I just remember saying, everybody didn't make it. Mm. Everybody didn't make it. And when we're looking at COVID and the pandemic, mm, like, don't, don't. people did not wake up. People yeah. are still grieving right now. People are, are, are wrestling with their relationship with God right now because they think that he betrayed them because they don't have their loved one mm. here no more. And so when I was Help listening us. to that Melodies of Heaven, mm -hmm. I'm saying, I remember where I was two years ago. Mm -hmm. I remember that I was trying to decide, am I going to, you know, mail these insurance papers back home? Because my parents don't know I got an insurance policy, you know, or if I do that, then I'm like, OK, well, then it's going to tip them off in terms of why he's in the middle just mailing insurance papers back home. Life and life policy paper, you know, and I'm, I'm struggling with like, am I going to stay here? Am I going to like. Yeah. And when you when when God takes us out of that mm -hmm. and he covers us, that song becomes so much more than a song. Yeah. And so for me, I'm like, everybody didn't make it, but we made it. Everybody that's here right now celebrating the life of John Cena, but celebrating life in this moment. Yeah. We made it, y'all. Yeah. And then the Holy Spirit just kind of took over in that moment. When you look at the footage, like that's a place where when you're authentic in your praise to him. And, and your worship to him, those moments just happen because whoever was in that crowd that may be smiling and coming to the party, but that's dealing with mm -hmm. secret depression. Man. Mm -hmm. God may want it to come and speak to. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, we put on face real good. Especially out here. Especially out here. You know. Out here. That's why I, I literally go to people sometimes. Like, I genuinely want to know, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. Like, I know we are here and you got this TV show and, you know, because I watch celebrities kill themselves all the time. I mean, Robin mm -hmm. Williams won. Mm -hmm. Someone who would think a comedian that we all knew and love and he just, yeah. all the time, people take, joy. take their self out. And it's yeah. just like, well, what is really, who sat this person down and said, you know what, what is really going on? How are you? Yeah. Do you need anything? Do you need prayer? We know you don't mm -hmm. need money. 
we know you don't need fame. Right. <laughs> we know you have worked hard enough to get all of that. But what 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 else do you need? And that moment though was so monumental to everybody. I mean, and my kids were here, so they're literally watching like I never seen anything like it. Mm -hmm. I'm talking grown men, grown adults, everybody shouting, everybody's crying, everybody's hands are in the air, mm -hmm. everybody out of nowhere. Yeah. Out of nowhere because we could have gave up. And that's one thing that I think people who are not here or watching or whatever really understood. We could have given up so many different times. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, can't, I don't even remember where I went after I got evicted from that apartment. Mm. I have no idea. <laughs> Look what couch I ended up on <laughs> with all my stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't even know. I can't even. I've been mm. through so much since then. That was 2015. Woo! Yeah. It was that long ago. It was that long ago. Yikes! How long? When did you get married? Last year, we had a uh, we had a backyard boogie wedding because of COVID. You know, we had planned to have get married in October. We got married in August. Uh -huh. We bumped it up and we did a small intimate thing, which actually was better. I'm sure. We had like 25 people. David Z was there. He helped set up everything. And of do course. It. So <laughs> David's it, gonna handle it. <laughs> he's gonna handle it. He handled it, you know. And it was just the best moment ever, you know. Every we got a toast from everybody that morning. Mm -hmm. I woke up with an hour video that somebody recorded all of everyone's the whole thing and sent it to us, and we watched it that morning. And that was y'all wedding video. That, that was, was our dope. wedding video. That was it. That's all I needed. That's it. That's it. And you know, I believe that when COVID hit, it was God literally saying, "I just need everybody to sit down. Everything is just mm -hmm. haywire." Yeah. Sit down, not just the United States, not just these people, <laughs> not just that the world. The world. Sit, sit down. down. Y'all are killing each other. All this, all these. Oh God, these music videos. Like no, I'm just saying these things. I know it's probably because I'm older, but just everybody no, it's sit turned down. Up. Sit down for a second. It's turned up. And then all of us with our excuses. Yeah. Well, if I had time, then I would do this. And God is like, I gave you the gift of time now. Where's your, where's your book? Yeah. Right. Where's your movie? Where's your this? Where's that? You don't have no. Give excuse. a whole year of time. You yeah. don't have any excuse right now. Yeah. A great niece on Saturn? Mm -hmm. No. No, but we on air, bro. Hmm? We on air. You gotta take yeah. Yeah, but okay. I gotta make sure. Well. Dude. Well, that's that's what happens. That's what happens. That's the living room. room. That's how it's like when you get live. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. That's the uh, living room. Uh oh. But to to what you Nick said though, pissed. John C. Nick is pissed. It's okay, y'all. We in the living room. To, to what to what you said Be with easy, the speed. with COVID. Um. <laughs> With COVID and a part of what that showed us, I always have to go back to like the 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 love of the love of God, right? Mm -hmm. And so, one thing that God had told me when I was in prayer one day, He said, "If everybody can understand that what I do and what I allow is out of love for us, mm -hmm. then life would be different." for how we go about life because you know we we get angry because or we get frustrated or mad or whatever because our expectations aren't met right and so we're looking for something and when we don't have that we get mad or frustrated or resentment or all of these things and if we can kind of shift that you know from a place of just like okay but what is in this like what is what shall be the fruit out of this seemingly bad situation right COVID, right and we can look at so many benefits from COVID, mm -hmm. you know, and I go back to looking at it as, man, out of COVID, you know, uh, not being insensitive to who lost, you know, um, you know, family members, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, but like, there's so much out of that, that we can still point back to the love of God. And when we look at the grander scheme of things, like in the United States, we're, we're, we're blessed so tremendously. You go outside the United States, there's so many people that have to steal in modern mm -hmm. day, walk 15 miles to go get water. Yeah. And God is not just a God of serving the United States. He says, those are my children. I need somebody to speak for me, to build wells, to do these things so that they can also have the same privileges that you have every day. Yeah. Like things like that. And so um, 
I, I just look at all of that and say, man, just the the love of God, like it's it can be it can kind of get you in this space of just like, man, like I got to look at this thing right. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, it's, it, it's crazy. <laughs> I, 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 I just I just. I just want to know from both of you guys, where are you now? As far as where you were, let's just say in 2015. Where, oh what has God done for you since then? I don't, know you know. Like, I don't know if we have enough time, time on the show. <laughs> just just, just give, give me a, a quick, quick, we got about 17 minutes. Well, like, I'm gonna no, say this. Don't take it all. Well, no. I'm going to say this. Um, I'm definitely in a in a in a great place right now. I can say, number one, therapy does work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Currently, me and my wife have a therapist that we see once a week. That's great. Uh, we started it once the top of this year, like February. It was like let's keep everything. We come from two different backgrounds, two different family styles, and like we're trying to build our own thing. Right. So therapy does work. It mm-hmm. helps bring out those things that you can find out about yourself and say, "Wow, I did this." So I've been understanding who I am, Mm -hmm. the things that I love, the things that I like. And if I can't do something, then I can't do it. Right. And I've been able I've been able to stand firm in a no and stand firm in my yes because of who I'm hearing it from. That's scripture, too. Your yes is be yes. Your no is be no. Now that's scripture. Amen. Amen. That's how you know. (laughs) <laughs> I'm walking. So you know, I'm, hey, I'm hey. different. I'm different. That's that's what's up, though. Yeah. You saying basically since 2015 you're going to therapy. Yeah, I'm so going to therapy. So now it's way better. It's way better. I'm married. You know, I have my own place. You married? We're Do you guys? Are you guys thinking family. about children? Absolutely. That's what I was about to ask. You. When are the kids Absolutely. coming? Absolutely. When is little John Cena coming? You know. <laughs> you know. We- <laughs> and I'm going to tell his wife why why that baby's going to be named that. It's like that. <laughs> You know, we're thinking about it because of, you know, how this year has been, how things is planned. We had a plan of what we wanted to do, get married. And I was going to travel and do photography around the world. Yeah. But then we shut down. So now it's like, okay, this is time to start thinking about family. Mm-hmm. Then we open up, I can go yeah, out. Yeah, you know what, though? I'm not going to lie. The pandemic really was, really was like, hey, sis, you about to be 50. Right. Like, <laughs> like, better like, get a man and, you know, if he wants some family or whatever, hey, like the pandemic really showed me man. that all of these things that I had plans to do, it ain't even important. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. no, it really showed me, like, I, I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> now, oh, I don't right. fear nothing. I'm scared to even pretend to think I had a plan for my life. You're right. God is like, oh yeah, oh yeah, that's gonna be great. And 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 I got picked up for a Netflix show. We were about to start filming in May. It was on. Mm. Finally, mm. John C is about to be this amazing household name. It was like shutdown. What does this mean? Right. What does this mean? We don't know when we're gonna be able to pick it up and and film and all of this stuff. And I'm like, uh. but my. <laughs> my face is like right there. It's in ready the to be put up. It's in the treatment. It's right there. I've learned this script for the pilot. I mean, the first, the first episode. It was, uh, it was like gone. Gone. Yeah, that was stuff lined up. Pandemic came in, shut mm-hmm. us all down. I was touring. I got just oh, got yeah. back from tour, yeah. and I was getting ready to do some more stuff, and I was just like shut down. I was like, what? Uh, no, uh, not now. Right now, <laughs> I was like, right now. That's probably what a lot of people said. Not, not, right, not, now. Right, now. not right now. <laughs> not right now. Help us. Help us. Help us. <laughs> <laughs> so, David, tell me what, what, where, as far as from back then to now, what mm. have you? Uh, you know, it's it's just been a lot of like great things. I think, and we actually in our men's ministry, we kind of we talked about this subject. A lot of men. We, um, we can struggle with intimacy, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And so that's not just intimacy, you know, in regular relationships, but that's going to mirror your intimacy with God. And I know that, um, for me, I, w- I didn't know that I was struggling with intimacy with God until I was in my relationship. Mm, struggling and with, so, intimacy with intimacy with, with your, um, re- your, with, more- with God. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, because intimacy is, is, is so much bigger than, you know, how the, the world may look at it from a sexual standpoint, right? Right. Intimacy is this closeness. Right. You know? And so, um, 
when we when we go back in terms of like looking at the family you come from or the experience you have from right. childhood, not mm-hmm. knowing how that can play into your Absolutely. adulthood. You know, you're just like, man, I didn't know that these things are in me that's prohibiting me from being all of who I'm supposed to be mm-hmm. to yeah. whether this relationship or this person or this business and most importantly to God. And so for me, I would say one of the biggest changes uh, that I'm still in the process of is really the intimacy with God, which is amazing. We all have been there when we sit in the presence of God. Mm-hmm. Oh, game changer. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a space that I love. And there's so many other physical fruits out that come outside of or that come from that intimacy. Um, Purpose yeah. Works is is got some great things going on now. We yeah. got a, a short in a in a um, uh, Michel Film Festival that uh, Kevin Welbeck, which we all know, ca- mm-hmm. with create the change. His first short did, did my you first shoot feature. That? Did you shoot that? Well, Purpose I was an Works? associate. I was an associate producer on that. Uh, oh, good. But Purpose Works, we did partner with um, two other uh, companies, Heartfelt Pictures and mm. Bendall, and uh, we produced our well, my first feature um, under Purpose Works. Um, and that's called eight minutes forty six seconds. Um, yeah. Darius was on board and yeah. on board now, you know, with uh, some post stuff. Um, you know, uh, the the Purpose Works brand is just continuing now that the foundation is right. Yeah, yeah. And I had to st- I had to just stop, you know, um, and make sure that the foundation was right because what's the point of building something? The foundation ain't right; it'll fall. Yeah. Man. And the thing is, we thought. Or I thought the foundation was right. One thing about, that's the love about of God. My, my, my friend Maya always says, how you do anything is how you do everything. Mm-hmm. And in my life, like my life right now is, is just, it's just great. I mean, I, I, I it's just great. My, the company that I keep, the people I'm around, just the, the, just the things that's happening. It's just, it's just great. But, it goes to show when you make that change, mm-hmm. how you do anything is how you do everything. Mm-hmm. The change is made in every area of your life. Yeah. So you can't be powerless in one area and then, you know, another area have a lot of power. You're going to be either either or. So that's just basically what's going on. That's basically what's going on in our, in our lives and our careers. Things are better and, you know. It's hopeful. Yeah. yeah. And we on we on we on board now. Mm-hmm. We on board. What you what you thinking about as far as a relationship though? You you want to get married or Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know, <laughs> so I come from a big family. Yeah. Uh, you know, some of you all know, Darius knows so how many. <laughs> I got 22 brothers and sisters. That's that Muslim ding ding. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't know how that came out, but the Muslims, they. they I thought I had. I got, I'm from one from eight. And I'm six. I he thought said, I was doing something with the baby of six. And I said, I'm. I'm good. the baby of six. You, you, where are you in number 22? So it's, it's, it's like a conglomerate when you got to like break it down, right? But um, on my mom's side, I am the youngest of okay. seven. Okay. Um, my dad had. Uh, 12 kids. Okay. I am, uh, I think, fourth youngest that there. And then my stepmom, um, she had 10 kids. And with with the wives that had, it's overlap, obviously. Um, but it's 22 of us in all. And so, um, you know, that, that family dynamic is something that um, there was 10 of us in the household at a time when I would go visit my dad. I mean, there's mm-hmm. certain things that you look at, and even now with how COVID really showed us, like, mm-hmm. what was important. Yeah. Um, I'm, yeah, I want to be married for sure. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to be in the kitchen, you know, cooking with my wife and, and you know, bringing up kids, you know, and uh, uh, it's a beautiful thing. Scam it's, likely calls me more than anybody. Okay. <laughs> I really, I really wish Scam and likely was the person. Morning, literally this morning. Oh, you know Scam too. Scam called me yesterday. Scam likely Scam, call, Scam likely All the time. is really Every what. Morning, it does its wake up call for me. <laughs> Scam like it really is the person that should show people how you should communicate. You know, they call. Right. They don't just text. I'm scam just waiting likely for calls. one of these pastors to make a sermon that says scam likely. Yeah. <laughs> we call scam likely. It'd be like, everybody has received the scam likely. I can't wait for that sermon. If you haven't received, you God, haven't received God, you have at least what, received what, the scam question, likely. Question. What pastor do you think would do? Mike Todd. <laughs> Easily done. Scam likely. 
I can see it done. Uh, not Mike Todd, though. I can see it because he put it together. What, what props she you think Mike Todd has? I mean, he's going to have the phone. It's going to be surrounded to the phone. I just know it. That's and funny. do you know what the scam is? That's funny. But, um, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's that's yeah. what's up, y'all. I yeah. totally appreciate y'all, first of all, coming to the John C. show. <laughs> like, yeah. Yes, I'm fun. so happy. Photo shoot yeah. coming soon. For John Cena, the Carter's touch. I need that. You know, we let gonna, me drop. Let me wait. I'm actually my boyfriend has me, uh, whether he realizes it or not, on my weight loss journey, on my Come game, because uh, he's 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 on his weight loss journey. I'm on mine, but wait until give me like about another. Look, let me know another like couple months. I like um, <laughs> I'll be ready to you know do a photo shoot. You look good I though. Yeah. I think. Thank you. you. Thank you. I, I I appreciate that, and I feel good. And y'all look amazing. And y'all like my little brothers that I just see like <laughs> advanced. All like, this chocolate in the room. Like y'all don't know, man. We we people we have man. no idea yeah. where we were, and man. what's what's what what's sad. And we really need to figure this out. We really need to get with Pierre and figure this out. I wanted him to come on the show today, but uh, he didn't. Uh, get back with me but uh we need to start we need to, because of the pandemic we had to stop feeding the homeless but i think we should be able to get it get it back going now what mm-hmm. y'all think yeah 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 i think yeah. i think he might be in the process of doing something like that i think they're doing probably doing like a pre-packaged preparing preparing it and then probably dropping it off loading it up vans or something like that and going down and kind of handing off yeah. things like that and what like I, that that what might be the do. best you know yeah um i don't know well i know you know kale's um, yeah, Kels, she has an organization um, called GOE, you mm-hmm. know, God Over Everything Movement. And um, I've been going down with her. She goes down on Fridays, but she doesn't necessarily serve uh, like what we, you know, we call it Hope Row, but Skid Row for most people that know it. Um, we still go downtown um, and we hit other spots outside of the hub. Yeah. And um, like I can you know, make sure that you all link. Cause I know there are certain protocols now in place. And so she would be able to kind of, we can get Pierre on the phone and, and Kale's on the phone and, um, she's partnered with a new, uh, enterprises and, um, uh, oil field ministries. And so we can all figure out and talk about like what that protocol looks like. Um, and really get back to, to doing that. Cause that, the biggest thing that I love about hope row and you know how I would get on the mic and I would say, you can't get your food unless you smile. <laughs> yeah, I remember all that. Oh, he, him and that mic and that speaker. The remember, remember, speaker. Remember it was between me and him. We were both. It right. was <laughs> one of y'all. Who's It'd the be... MC today? And then I got to hop on if y'all ain't there. I ain't right, want to hop on. Right. Give it to Pierre. I pray over here. Jay-Z, come take the mic from me if I'm acting bad. Yeah, I'm... She was the acting I bad. I only fought, I just I want y'all to know, I only fought like two people the whole in, Going in, in bad. five years. I did good. <laughs> she did good. Two people. One lady. Was y'all there with that lady at that crutch? And she she swung the she was on crutches and she she, yes. she, she swung the crutch at me. I don't, I don't and know. And I was like, I, was I jumped in her face and said, "You gonna be on two crutches? You like, two crutches. I don't I said, care." Said, we, we they serving. was like, "John said, John, John said, come, come here." I was like, "Nah, nah, 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 nah." Your DC is showing. Your DC she bold showing. enough to jump in somebody's face. Like I come totally back. forgot. Come back. I said, this ain't a church. This a foundation. I will f <laughs> you up. I don't care if you homeless or not. You gonna get your tail beat. You jump up. You hit hit me with that crutch. Hit me with that crutch. I wanted it. <laughs> Pierre was like, John Cena, what are you doing? And the look on his face, I felt so bad. But in that moment, she was about to get she it. She was about to get it. Yeah, I missed that. And it was, it was, it was, boy, they had some crazy people down there, though, y'all. Throwing food back at us. Yeah. Mad yeah. because we didn't get him a, a thigh instead of a wing. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> it was some picky moments. <laughs> it, was it was some vegetarians came <laughs> through the line. I mad. Said, okay. And mad. Oh, man. I got it. I, was, I used to be like, you know, you can get out the line. We don't need you. They called me the warden down, downtown. Warden. Y'all. She, that, say she, that. Was. she would say, you can get out she the line. Sure like, yeah, we don't have to feed you. We doing this out the kind of our heart, but it's not a must. You can go the 
come for real. We good. <laughs> I'm about to go back to somebody's house. No, like, <laughs> that's horrible. why sometimes we had to reel John Cena back. She's that's like, why we had to reel it back. We had we, <laughs> we had Pierre that could speak her language from the hometown. Yeah, and then we had to be there from the church side and say John Cena. We John Cena. That ain't even it, y'all. We I was you. the person praying for people. And she was one praying. <laughs> she said was. She just said that and then turn around. You need prayer. Anybody need <laughs> prayer need in prayer? the name of anybody? In the name of Jesus. Because I can pray it down. Down, y'all, but let me tell you something. There was spirits just come fine, out there. It was a fine was like, it's a spirit, John. See it? Don't let that spirit get on you. And I'm like, yeah. I don't care what it is. Whatever it is, it's about to get knocked up out of her. <laughs> right. She picked up her crutch, though, y'all, and swung it at me. She was on crutches. I'm like, I will murder you, especially if you're on crutches. Okay. Lord. <laughs> but not literally. Veer it off. Veer it off. No, <laughs> literally. It's like, don't, don't tell me. <laughs> like, <laughs> Hey, remember when I had to get this? Okay, okay. Let's Stop. talk about. Let's, let's talk. We have changed lives. We are, about to, we are about to get off of air and finish this conversation. <laughs> but I love you guys. Thank you for tuning yeah. into the John C. Show. Proud of you both. I mean, seriously, I am proud of y'all. I'm glad y'all still here because yeah. there's a lot of us we know that was down there with us that that I'm not gonna say giving up, but that have went home. Mm -hmm. And you know, ho hopefully they come back because once you leave, you can't really stay yeah. gone for good yeah. anyway. But you know, yeah. let's just you know keep each other in prayer. And you know, thank you again for doing my party. Thanks for coming through, Darius, yeah. <laughs> with the pictures and all of that. I had to come through. Tell these people where they can find you guys, and if they need you, how can they get a hold of you? And you know. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, so obviously Instagram is that's the main platform that yeah. you know we use and it's purpose works. Um and the personal one is I am dot David Z. Uh but for for anyone that is uh attempting to identify their purpose or um that may know their purpose but don't know how to pursue it or, or that needs to expand it. That's for purpose works. Mm -hmm. The personal. So I can just, give you my short, and we are gonna just start shooting. It's all like creative collaboration. Like that's the space where where we're at now, um, and like where purpose works is. Like again, Darius and I, we did a project together, um, top of two thousand and twenty, uh, which was the first one of purpose works when, like, mm -hmm. God brought me like back out. Um, and we've done a few projects together, again, the feature, whatnot. And I'm like, we're in this space of creative collaboration. Good. So. That's what's up. Yeah. Keep a yeah. lookout for the 846. That's going to be really good. Yeah. That's going to be really I good. I can't wait. I, we let put me a know. lot of work in that. On, yeah. I will put it on every one of my Shout platforms. Shout out to Denton. I say my platforms are super huge, but I'm, I'm here for whatever I can mm -hmm. do. And uh, where can they find some information on that card is touch? Well, that's it. It's that. That's it. The card. The uh, most people forget the the. The the is a part yeah. of the of the name that is on the LLC. It says the card is touch, but the card is touch um, everywhere. Instagram, the website, the card is touch dot com. My personal page is my name Darius L dot Carter. Uh, definitely follow me there. I'll be posting up things there when we have new stuff coming out. You know, or new things that we're doing. Me and my wife about to relaunch our YouTube channel, which is um, nice. happily ever now. Ah, um, so now good. that we're married, we're going to kind of put a spin on it, and then when, and especially going through therapy. So, was it to engage people in there first? Because I think I'm going to be on there soon. Right, boo. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I know that's crazy, right? Oh, man. Right, it's gonna be. But some of our other ones are up there. During COVID, we decided to call, reach out to our couple friends mm -hmm. because we heard of all of the divorce rates going up, and we had we wasn't even married yet, and we was like, we wonder how our married friends are, who's been speaking into us. So and let's get them ready, on a they Zoom. Was all ready to get divorced. No, like, no, I'm no. Just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> you know what? This is no. Too <laughs> No, but Couple it was of them had great. another baby. <laughs> Happily ever now on YouTube, the Carters touch everywhere, and my name Darius. L. I love Carter. it. Yeah. I love it. And we thank you back. Um, yeah. You know, it's something where, and I, I said this, I said this to you before, but it's something that you mentioned, and like we we say it jokingly, uh, but it really speaks to who you are at the core. Mm. Like, I'm really big on like. And I say it a lot, and I, I got this from Major when he first said it, and I haven't stopped I love saying Major. It. Yeah, it's my brother. Um, Shout out to you, Major. Shout out yeah, to you, Major. Like so, so Major, I got this word from you when you said it, uh, and it's heart posture. And mm -hmm. I've been, 
I'm in this t space now where God is so big about how your heart is. Mm -hmm. And when I look at John Cena, like mm -hmm. your heart is so big, like so big for so many people. And then you have the gift of, of, of you know, comedic creativity on top of that. Mm -hmm. Oh, like ain't, 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 Life ain't no the telling medicine. why the enemy wants to come after you anytime he can. Like you're a walking weapon. Mm, I appreciate you. You're a walking weapon, John Cena. Ah, oh, you know? like, a walking weapon. I appreciate that. It, 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 it's time. Yeah. I just put it that way, and I know that the person that I am, I can't wait to, and I know people say this all the time, but I truly mean it, to bring people, everybody that I know will be on every project that I touch. Mm. Everybody. Everybody that can do something will be there. Like, yeah. it, and, and God has shown me in so many different ways that it's a lot of things that he has told me to write and do. Like I'm writing a play right now. It's a musical, actually, which is crazy because I don't even sing. But uh, <laughs> I was like, a musical? God's like, a musical. I'm mm. like, crazy. But I'm writing a musical right now, a couple Netflix shows I want to do and things like that. But I want all mm. hands on deck. I want everybody. When them things stroll, I want every single person that God put in my radar from the beginning mm. to the end to be a part of my projects yeah. and he said it he said you are going to be the reason why so many people eat that's why i i need you to get away from procrastination and just different things like that because you know i'm ready just to just do this thing just yeah, to yeah. grow and just go <laughs> and i'm gonna I'm a double down on that um and affirm that even more because even when you were like um talking about that i went back to you know how we all have looked at like classics and you'd be like yo this person was in it this person was in it this yeah person was in it. before they you're, was that person uh -huh. you're the channel for that and i'm gonna just speak to that because again it's about the heart posture yeah. and being able to see people mm -hmm. and not just see them but to give them the opportunity for people to see them and that's honestly how it happens yeah. just like yeah. that like i was just even while you were saying that i was thinking and it's funny how even you guys are lined up because it was like as i fell a few times you caught me boom and i mm -hmm. got back up and i moved to long beach then i was like <laughs> back at it again he caught me mm -hmm. i stayed with david and i met my wife mm -hmm. i met my wife at a place that i was like what woman want a guy living on the couch no nine to five no car mm -hmm. just me and I ran into a person who had all of the, the boxes checked. And she loved me for me. Yeah. And then and it was like you said, it was a feeling how you said. And I was like, oh, this is it. This is why when guys say when I knew, I knew. Mm -hmm. I knew on our first date. I said, this is my wife. I told David, you know, he's my roommate. I told everybody, I said, this is it. Now, listen to me. My boyfriend said to me, we met during the pandemic. Come and on. he said to me. God told me you can be my wife. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> not my God. <laughs> no, he didn't. Like, <laughs> nah, you don't even know me like that. Now nah, I am the black widow. I will take your heart and crush you and throw you the heck away. Come like, on. God did not God tell you that. <laughs> say, no, he did not say that. And the more and more I talked to him, the more and more I was like, oh my gosh. Am I really about to be somebody's wife? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, man. But, you know, God said it. He gives you all the desires of your heart. So, oh, I mean, dang, here man. we are. Here yeah. we are. I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. Um, I'm just excited for our, all of our futures. And I thank y'all for coming to the show. We about five minutes old, but it's all good. <laughs> I thank you. Yeah. We took a five minute break. So I know. That might be good seeing if you added me another person on. I added and someone, Kevin, guys. You, come on. I think she did her thing. Thank honestly. you to everybody in the chat for tuning in. I will see you guys next week. I don't know who's going to be on here, but it's just going to be just as fun. 